Hey, good morning. Out for an early woods walk. Not as early as usual, though. Uh, it's been a while since I've been with you. I've been very busy, and my woods walks of lately have been either at daybreak where there's not good light to make a video, or I've been carrying stuff that's not conducive for a video. So I haven't been doing that on my walks lately. So I recently taught a class in Pennsylvania, taught two classes actually in Pennsylvania for field craft survival. Uh, taught a one day tracking class and a one day land navigation class. And had a, several people in there that were experienced in land navigation that, that are, that, that I would say are like me and that I'm constantly trying to figure out how other people do things to better my own skill. It's tracking and land navigation, survival, all of it really. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of recommending to people to train with as many good teachers as you can and take take from them what you can and make it your own skill set. And, and that's important. So after the course, I was talking to a couple of the guys that were helping me what we love, who we love when we refer to as the mics, and would ask them various things about how they did things. And I learned from them and they learned from me. It was really good. But uh, Mike Travis suggested that, well, first off, he said he really likes the, the Woods Walk videos and I needed to get back on doing them. So here you go, Mike. But also I asked him, what he thought a good topic to cover would be. And basically he said troubleshooting with a compass. One specific thing I'll share with you in a moment. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Um, I have Silver Ranger with me today. And I'll stop here in a minute, find a tree I can hang this, this, uh, Sorry, it's muddy right here. I don't want to slip and break my neck. I'll find a spot to set this compass up. I mean this this camera up and we'll chat about troubleshooting. All right, this looks like a good spot. Puppy, you got leaves all over you. Okay, let's talk about compasses. Let's talk about troubleshooting on them and make sure they're accurate. First off, if you're if you've never bought a compass and you're getting ready to buy one, here's the two companies that I recommend: Sunto, that's S U U N T O, or Brunton. Um, Tracy, who Tracy Trimble, who I wrote the Essential Wilderness Navigation book, and he teaches uh, nearly all of our classes in land navigation for Nature Reliance School. Uh, he's had considerable and good success with Brunton. I've had really good success with Sunto. Uh, I buy a lot of compasses and have bought compasses throughout the years for our classes. And I can tell you, to keep this conversation positive, use a Sunto or a Brunton. They have higher quality standards than other makers that are out there. And I know I'm not mentioning, uh, I'm not talking about lensatic compasses like Kaminga today. I'm just talking about base plate type compasses today. Now, with that said, uh, many years ago, several different compass makers had good quality. Silva was one of them. That's what I'm carrying today is a Silva Ranger, all right? Um, I wouldn't recommend, recommend getting this compass now. I'll leave it at that. Um, okay, so here's some things that we got to make sure that we do. First off, we want to make sure the compass itself is accurate, and here's some things. Uh, if you store this compass near anything um, magnetic, it could easily pull off and make the compass inaccurate. So don't do that. That can include things like a GPS watch. That can include a GPS where there's some sort of device or equipment inside of a GPS that could help pull uh, or make things magnetic and make this compass inaccurate. If you leave it next to something metal, it could. It's not likely, but it could. Uh, if you're running a school and you got multiple compasses, do not take all the compasses, put them in a big Ziploc bag because that's gonna pull them off. 
very, very problematic. I see, I, I've seen a lot of guys do that, and that's, you can't do that, okay? You just can't do that. Um, the other thing is, this portion right here is designed to rotate. We, if you know anything about compasses, you understand that. But what it's not designed to do is move side to side, like move this direction. Like if I grab hold of it and do this, I should not get any movement from it, okay? If I move it this way, that could easily be off two degrees. Easily, just because of the uh, low quality standards of the bezel and how it makes contact with the base plate itself, okay? So don't do that. If you pull, if you get a compass at a store and you pick it up and it does that, don't buy it. It's garbage. Uh, the other thing is, in use, you want to make sure that you use this thing correctly. So, what I mean by that is that you don't want it to be, you don't want to be holding it like this and have it at an angle like this or having an angle like this. I'm exaggerating that. I like to hold my compass and rotate my body and make sure that the arrow that's on the inside, on this particular one, the red arrow is what I refer to as the north seeking arrow to help me remember under stress and when I'm tired, that's the arrow that should be seeking north because you have a clinometer in here, you have the orienting arrow, you have the direction of travel arrow, you have the north seeking arrow. There's a lot of arrows here. And so I like to give them descriptive names for myself and for those that I'm fortunate enough to teach to, to make sure everything's really clear. The other thing to do when you're purchasing a compass is that the needle itself on this one, you have red on one side and that little white mark is, is a glow in the dark line to help you utilize this compass after dark. And this piece right here is the south arrow, basically. Um, those are weighted. So let me put it this way. If this is my north arrow and this is my south arrow, depending upon where you are, northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere, they will actually put more weight <clears throat> they will put more weight on one side of the arrow than the other to make it balance out instead of it being like this because there's magnetic pull basically in concert with gravitational pull that pulls that needle down to the earth and so they'll weight those a certain way so that in the southern hemisphere they work more accurately or they work uh, better in the northern hemisphere so what you're looking for when you buy them is for us in the Northern Hemisphere, buy a compass that has NH on it, uh, Northern Hemisphere, or buy a compass that says global, because those are engineered to tolerances that it'll work properly in either hemisphere, okay? So um, that that's really big, because I've, I've we've got several people that are following us down in South America now, and I hope that helps. Uh, I hope that helps, because some people can now go to, let's say, Amazon or online retailers and you just buy a compass and you don't know the difference between a NH compass or a global compass or a SH compass. And now you're, you're basically going to be inaccurate with a brand new compass. The other thing, and this is why I'm not a fan of Silva, because I bought a lot of Silvas that have developed bubbles in the last few years. Their quality just went downhill fast. It took a nosedive when they moved manufacturing operations. But if you've got bubbles inside the bezel, then it's not going to be accurate. It could be, I mean, depending upon the size of the bubble, it might be 20 degrees off. So the question that everybody likes to ask, stand by. The question that a lot of people like to ask is, is, okay, so if, if I'm here and I take an azimuth that way and I'm off one degree, how far off am I when I get out there? Okay, so uh, I did this calculation back when I wrote the book. And it's, it's worthy of note because people aim off, and that's a topic for another day. But sometimes it's very pur purposeful and useful to be off. That sounds crazy. If you've never done that, maybe I'll do that another video on that. If you have interest in that, then let me know. But you are about 30 meters off. If you stay directly on the line that you shoot with your compass and that compass is actually one degree off. So when you get to that location, that's one mile out there, you're about 30 meters off. Really in the scheme of things, depending upon what you're doing, that's not that big of a deal. Okay. 
But think about it. If you go out two degrees off, which would be easy to do with a compass that has a uh, movement side to side on the bezel, then you, you're, now you're 60 meters off. And we're just getting farther and farther away. So think about this. I've had uh, well-meaning, well-intentioned people that want to teach land nav but really don't have any business doing it, saying that there's no, there's no uh, use in worrying about declination. Declination is the difference between basically grid north and and uh, and a magnetic north. So I just taught that class in Pennsylvania up there. Declination is 12 degrees. Think about that. What's 12 times 30? <laughs> if you don't account for declination and you walk exactly what you set your compass for, but it's already 12 degrees off because you didn't account for declination, then you're 360 meters off when you get one mile out there. That's a lot, you all. So you've got you've to study with somebody. If somebody says that declination doesn't matter, then don't, oh man, don't, don't listen to them. <laughs> um, yeah, that would have been me 15 years ago because I didn't understand declination. But now I understand declination much better than I did, obviously, thanks to Tracy. But it's one of those things you've got to account for it. And I'm not a fan of on the compasses they have the little brass screw where you account for declination on your compass and go ahead and set it. I'm not a fan of that. I would rather think of it as a scientific process and consistently, sorry, going uphill, and consistently work through that process each time. We call it like a quality control checklist, really, is what you're doing as you're taking measurements and azimuth and you're getting ready to shoot it out through there, as you go through a quality control check, what I usually do is I will go, okay, I'm looking at the map or I'm looking at my GPS and I know from here, that direction is somewhere around, it's gonna be Northeast, right? And so when I get my angle, if that measurement's not close to 45 degrees, then I've got to do something different. Because just looking at it, I can see it's about northeast. It's somewhere halfway between north and east, 45 degrees. If I come up with 186, then I know I'm off. And so this is especially true when you're by yourself. If you're with other people, and I believe, I don't want to speak for Tracy, but I've heard him say it this way, I think. So he'll correct me if I'm wrong. Oftentimes when they're doing search and rescue and they're determining angles or distances or stuff of that nature, they'll actually split up. One person will go to one end of the truck if that's where they met up. They'll get off away from the vehicle Another one will get off on the other end of the vehicle, come up with these distances and measurements, and then they'll get together and go, okay, what did you get? And if they're on together, then they can feel like they can move on that. But if they're off, then they have to regroup and do it again. That's just good quality control, particularly in a team environment. And when you have the time to do that, then, um, absolutely take the time to do that you shouldn't have a situation where you got a group of people and only one person in the group that's going out on a hike together knows how to use a map and a compass it should be multiple people because if something happens to that person well you're screwed and if that person makes a mistake which we all do at times then who's there to do the quality control who's there to check it and so again when you have time Sometimes in tactical situations, situations you can't. Let's say a special forces team, right? That's why people that are the nav guy in that group, well, number one, everybody knows how to nav in that group. 
But if there's a person that's assigned to be the NAS person, then they are on point. And they spend a lot of time practicing under stress and working through it. And so you should do that too. For example, I was teaching a tracking class this weekend and we had some land navigation students that were in the tracking class. So as we're moving through the woods, I'm pretending I'm incident command requesting grid coordinates, headings, and all the information pertinent to land navigation on the move and watching our land nav students work through that. And I've been doing that a lot lately. And so that's just a stressor. It's just a way of training. You can do the same thing. It's one thing to stand here with your notebook, clipboard, compass, map on that clipboard and everything go okay. It's another animal altogether when you're trying to do all that and you're walking. It's an even bigger task when you're doing that, like in a military setting where somebody's trying to shoot at you or you have to be in defense of yourself. So I hope this gives you some ideas on troubleshooting for compass use. It's uh, one of those things that I think everybody should do and uh, have an accurate understanding of how to be able to land nav and take care of yourself in the outdoors. So this has been Craig Cottle, Director of Nature Alliance School for a Woods Walk. Good to be back with you all. Thank you for your support. Can't do it without you, so please do this for me. Uh, share this on uh, any social media platform that you possibly can. Uh, tell people about us. Recommend us if you feel like what we're giving you is good information. And uh, we can't thank you enough for that. Like the video. Uh, comment on it wherever you see it. And I can't thank you enough, you all. It's 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 just an absolute pleasure and humble uh humbling situation to uh, be in a position to help people all over the world, literally, at this point. So thank you for it. Come on, join in. Let's learn together.